This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 7, Section 2, Ionic Bonds and Ionic Compounds. In this section, you're going to be able to explain the electrical charge of ionic compounds and explain three properties of them. You have heard of harvesting crops such as wheat or rice, but salt? In many coastal countries that they have warm, relatively dry climates, salt is produced by the evaporation of seawater. The salty water is channeled into a series of shallow ponds where it becomes more concentrated as the water evaporates by exposure to the sun. When the salt water is concentrated enough, it is diverted into a pan on which the sodium chloride crystals deposit. Salt farmers then drain the pans and collect the salt into piles to dry. In this section, you will learn how cations and anions combine to form stable compounds such as hmm, sodium chloride. That's the salt. So I thought that was interesting information. And to get you understanding of how we're going to take that cation metal and the anion nonmetal, and now how are they going to bond with each other? So pause the video, fill in those blanks, read as you write, and then play to hear my words. So what is an ionic bond? An ionic bond is going to be that attraction between two opposite charges. And what really happens is because metals like to lose their electrons, well, where are they losing them to? They have to go somewhere. What's going to happen is those electrons are going to be transferred from that metal to the hmm, non-metal. So in an ionic compound, it's going to be really um, important to understand that an ionic compound is always between a metal who lie on the left of that stair step case and a non-metal who is placed on the right side of that stair step case on the periodic table. So hopefully things are starting to come together, right? That's why we learned the parts of the periodic table, knowing where the metals and non-metals are, because now we know that the metals tend to lose and become cations and non-metals like to gain electrons and become anions. So magical combination, right? So now we have a positive and a negative negative charge, they're going to attract each other, and they're going to become what's called a salt or ionic compound. So first let's remember how these cations are formed. Remember that metals tend to have few valence electrons, so they're going to give up their valence electrons, right, to achieve that octet rule. And remember we did this in the last section, so if you need to revisit that section or re-listen to that section, uh, you should do so. So that calcium is going to lose one, and it's going to lose two electrons and become that plus two charge. Now let's remember, how are we going to name this? Is it's going to stay calcium or are we going to change its name? Hopefully you remember it's just going to stay calcium. Metals stay their same name. Okay, now let's go the other way. Let's think about anions. Phosphorus is a non-metal. Now it has many valence electrons. In this case it has uh, one, two, three, four, five. But now let's notice we have a pair and we have three singles. That's going to be important too. This is going to tell us that, well, that pair is going to stay as a pair, but it needs three more. Phosphorus needs to gain three more to, to gain that octet. So it's going to gain one, it's going to gain two, it's going to gain three. So what's going to happen is that phosphorus now has gained three electrons, now it's going to have that negative three charge. But because it's an anion, does it stay phosphorus for the name? No. Hopefully in the back of your head you're thinking that change uh, a name is going to be phosphide. Again, if you're unsure of how to change some of these, I know that in that last section I showed you that slide and we went over how those endings change. Okay, so now let's look at that sodium atom. Let's look at that sodium atom and see how this bond is actually going to form. So I want to remind you that that sodium atom is going to change into an ion when it loses that electron. The chlorine, very similar, the chlorine atom is going to change into an ion um, in order to be stable. So what's going to happen is that positive and negative are going to be attracted to each other and now they're going to form that compound <clears throat> and that attraction is going to happen. Now they're both happy. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then we're going to get NaCl or sodium chloride. Remember that that chlorine actually changes to chloride. I'm not happy about that. Um, but we're going to learn this a little bit more. Okay, so in your notes, uh, there's a place to draw 
the process. That's what I want you to draw. I want you to draw the process of these ionic uh, bonds and how they're forming. So this is going to be another time where it's probably better if you listen first and then I'll tell you when to pause the video and then write it in your notes. All right, so let's look at sodium chlorine again, um, or sodium and chlorine, I should say, and uh, make sure that you're understanding what that process is. Now, this to me is the easiest one to understand because you all know that sodium chloride is NaCl, uh, and that's the salt that we put on our food to eat. Um, so this is, it's always nice to look back at something that you already know. So sodium, if we look at our periodic table, sodium is going to have one valence electron because it's in group one. All right, find chlorine. I guess I should have told you that. Take out your periodic table, your real one, and maybe the one that has the charges. Okay, so sodium's in group one, has one valence electron. All right, you should find chlorine. It's in group 17, so that has seven valence electrons. Now notice I'm using dots and stars just so we can keep track of whose electron goes to whom, okay? All right, so sodium is going to give up his electron, give away, and chlorine's going to gain it. Ooh, the magical combination here, right? So now sodium has a plus one charge uh, because it lost its outer energy level, and chlorine has gained that electron. So that's why that dot now is closer to chlorine. So now we have a plus one charge, we have a negative one charge, and ha, huh, what a magical combination. They're both happy that way. So now they're going to form that compound NaCl because we have one. 1Na and we have 1Cl in that compound. Hmm, very nice. Again, something you should already know. So now how are we going to name this guy? Well, sodium stays sodium, but remember that chlorine changes to chloride. So just to show you some kind of visual, again, here's our ions that are going to be forming. Here is the actual arrangement of the sodium chloride. And then this is what we actually see, right? So this is what we see, but this is really what's inside. And this is why there's that attraction. So at this point, pause the video and copy this information into your notes so you understand the process of how an ionic bond forms. Okay, so now we should go on to a little joke. Ha ha. So we want to remember, though, that elements can give or gain more than one electron, right? You saw that with calcium in the very beginning of this video. It lost two. You saw that with phosphorus. In order to phosphorus to be happy, it's going to have to gain three. So it's not always a one-to-one -one ratio. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so let's go back with sodium and now oxygen. How are those two atoms going to bond in this ionic um, format? So sodium, you already know, is in group one, so it has one valence electron. There he is. Now let's look at oxygen. Hmm, oxygen's in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. Again, I like using dots and stars so I can see that process. All right, so sodium's going to give up his one valence electrons, and now he's happy. But now let's think about oxygen. Oxygen started with six. It needs two. Again, notice it has two pairs and two singles. So it needs two electrons in order to be happy. So there has to be more than one sodium to help him out. So if you notice now, the only way that oxygen is going to be able to get another electron is from another sodium. It has to be the same element. We're only dealing with two elements at a time. Okay? So now what happens? Well, now each, because there's two of them, each sodium gave up one. So again, each of them has a plus one charge. We know that sodium's in group one, so it's going to have a plus one charge. No if, ands, or buts. Okay, but now we need two of them. And now oxygen's happy, the one oxygen, with the negative two charge, because now it has that octet. So again, the formula is going to be two Na's and one oxygen. Think about water, guys, H2O. Why is it H2O? That two comes from the fact that there has to be two hydrogens to make that one oxygen happy. Same thing here. There has to be two sodiums in order to make that one oxygen happy. All right, let's think about that name. Sodium stays sodium and oxygen changes to oxide. Okay, now pause the video and make sure to get this process into your notes. 
All right, now let's look at a little bit more confusing one. We got calcium and we got phosphorus. Uh oh, a little too fast there. We got calcium and phosphorus. So here's calcium, here's phosphorus, and what's going to happen? All right, so calcium has two, phosphorus needs three. Mmm, let's see what happens here. Notice we need three calciums in order to satisfy two phosphoruses. All right, so I'm sorry, I'm going to go back here. Um, so you should pause and try to draw that out. However, I am going to preempt and say, I'm going to show you a little shortcut. This was just to show you how complicated it can be, okay? It shows you how complicated it can be. And this is also trying to show you how... Three plus twos have to equal the two minus threes. A compound has to be neutral, okay? There can't be a charge in a compound. And so this is what's happening with these two. So what happens is, again, there's three calcium uh, atoms and there's two phosphorus atoms in order for this compound to be neutral and to be happy with each other. And again, what's going to be that name? Calcium phosphate. Okay, calcium phosphide. And this is what we call an Fu. Yes, a formula unit. So an ionic bond is actually considered a formula unit. So again, pause the video to make sure you get that formula and the name uh, for that complicated compound. All right, so again, what is that formula unit? Is really the whole number ratio of ions that are formed in that ionic compound. Okay, so later on, when we talk about uh, mole ratios, we're going to be doing mole conversions, we're going to be talking about certain compounds are, are given a certain title. So in other words, ionic compounds are always going to be called or considered formula units, where covalent compounds, which we'll talk about, oh, sorry about the bell, uh, in ionic uh, covalent compounds, we're going to call them molecules. All right, so can you figure out the formula and the name of these guys if I'm combining NaCl and SRF, if I tell you what ratio they're in? Well, this one should be easy, right? Again, you already know that a one-to-one -one ratio, but you don't see the ones. That's why I want to bring this to your attention. You do not see the ones. Those are understood. Because if I asked you how many NAs or CLs are in this compound, you'd say there's one of each because you see them. And again, that name sodium chloride, which you know right now. All right, can you do the ratio of strontium and fluorine? Hopefully this makes sense, right? If I have one strontium and two fluorines, that's what that would look like. So again, what's going to be the name of this guy? Strontium fluoride. Remember to change the ending there. So I already mentioned this. Again, the charge of a compound is always, 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 always neutral. Even though it's composed of electrically uh, charged ions, the compound itself, when they're bond together, is going to be neutral. It's not going to have a charge at all. Okay, we will see you in class, and hopefully that makes sense, and if it doesn't, rewind and make sure that you're watching that process, even though, hint, 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 I'm going to be showing you a shortcut next section.